Problem three is going to also require us to do a little bit of data wrangling before we can actually do the analysis that we want to do. Let's take a look at the form of the CSV that we're going to be working with. In this CSV, some of the rows have two dots in them to indicate that it's missing data. And if we scroll down here, it does seem as though this is legitimately missing data as opposed to zeros. It's basically not included for certain categories. The ones that have these life expectancy values are kind of regular nation states, whereas the ones that are missing are things like territories or microstates or things that are maybe just not included in those data. First, we need to read it in, and then we're going to need to convert those cells that have the two dots in them into actual missing data. So let's start by creating a data frame. called Women Development. And, and to get that data frame, we're going to use read.csv. And we need to have the URL where we can read the file directly. If I look at this page here, this is not the raw file that I have a URL for. The URL for the web page is here. But in order to get the URL for the raw data file, I need to click on the raw button. And here we can see the actual CSV data. So we'll go up here into the browser bar and copy this, and then use that as the value that I put inside the read CSV command. Let's try this and see if it works. Ah, I forgot to put it in quotation marks. Bad me. Now let's try it again. All right, here's Women in Development. And it did get read in, but I do need to get rid of these missing data values that are indicated by the two dots. I could use the strategy I did before, which would be to look for the cells that have values of two dots in them. But it would actually be easier to just indicate that those are missing values at the point at which I read the data frame in. And I can do that using the um, na strings argument for the read CSV command. So this URL is so long, I'm going to do a little trick here and just assign the URL to a named object or variable. And that's going to allow me to have a more easily readable function with arguments. So uh, the first argument that I want to have is the URL. But then I'm going to say in a strings equal and then the string that I want it to use for NA is two dots. So let's try running these two lines here. And then take a look at our women in development data frame. So now we see that the spaces that used to have two dots in them now have NAs in them, which is the actual R missing data character. So that's what we want. Now for part C, let's go ahead and scroll down towards the bottom. There are a few lines here that are not actually countries. The last country ends in line 217, which is Zimbabwe, but then there's some summary statistics for different continents, the entire world, low and middle, middle and high income countries, and so on. 
So what we really want to do is to include only the first 217 lines instead of all of them. We can do that by just specifying the range of values that we want to include from the particular column. So let's create a vector called email expectancy. And that is going to come from the Women Development Data Frame, and the column that we want is Female Life Expectancy at Birth. But we only want to include lines 1 through 217. All right, so female expectancy, it's giving us numbers from 1 to 217 instead of the entire column. Now that we have the female expectancy, it's quite simple to find the mean by simply passing it into the mean function. Let's run that and we see that we get a value of NA because it will not calculate this with the missing data. In order to calculate it without that, we need to add an argument to the function that tells it to ignore missing data. So let's add an NA.RM argument to our mean function here. Now if we calculate, we do get a value, 75. Let's compare this with the female life expectancy at birth that we see in the data frame for the world. And the value there is 74.7. It's not exactly the same, and if we think about it, the reason why is that some countries are larger than other countries. The calculation that we did assumed that every country was the same size. The problem is that we are not carrying out a weighted average. In other words, the numbers are not being weighted by the population of the country. Whereas for the expectancy for the entire world, we would have to use a weighted average. So looking at the data frame again, the non-discrimination clause mentions gender in the Constitution is not a continuous numeric factor. It's rather a categorical factor. And if we want to uh, compare categorical factors, we can use a box and whisker plot. Part E asks us to create a box and whisker plot for the percentage of women married by age 18 as a continuous factor, or Y. So let's just say plot, and then we want to uh, put a column percentage of women first married as our Y, and then a tilde and for X we will use non-discrimination clause mentions gender. Let's try running that. As you can see, I got an error message down here, and this may be because I didn't convert the discontinuous variable into a factor, which is required in order to do a box and whisker plot. So I'm going to adjust this by passing the non-continuous 
values into the as factor function. Then let's try again. And that was indeed the problem. Now, I didn't read the question carefully enough because it says, don't forget about excluding the lines at the bottom. So I actually should put here square bracket 1 colon 217. And I'll copy this and just paste it here as well. Now let's try running that again. As you can see, it didn't really make any difference in the plot. And if we go back and examine the data, we can see why. If I scroll down to the bottom of the non-discrimination clause mentions gender, we see that the values are all NAs for the summary rows from world and the rest of the way down. So those are all getting excluded anyway, but still it's probably better for me to write my code in this way to explicitly leave out the columns that are inappropriate. I didn't answer the last part of the question, which is, is there a difference between countries that mention gender in a non-discrimination clause and those that don't? Well, there is some difference in the mean, but basically the, uh, bars completely overlap on the two, so it doesn't look like there's any significant difference there. For part F, create an XY scatter plot visualizing the relationship between female financial account ownership and seats in parliament held by women. Well, we should look at the data first. Female account ownership. That's a numeric percent values. And Percentage of seats held in Parliament. That's also percentage value. So we can plot these as an XY scatter plot. So let's just do that. Plot. Let's put, um, well, we don't really know which is the dependent and independent, so we'll just pick one. Let's put Women development, female financial account ownership as X. And let's remember to exclude the last rows. And the tilde and Women in Parliament's percentage seats. All right, let's try running that. Well, it doesn't look like there's any terribly clear relationship between the two, but let's go ahead and create the model for this. So I'm just going to copy this line, paste it in, and then change plot into model. And pass in the linear model function and save it as model. Now that I have the model, I can calculate basic statistics by just doing a summary of the model. And it does look from this like there is a significant uh, relationship. I'm not sure what that means, but P is less than 0.05. Again, we have the question as to whether it's appropriate to assume there's any causative relationship between X and Y. 
that's probably not a valid assumption and we probably should be doing a correlation rather than a regression.